Hello everyone, welcome to your 6th QB64 tutorial. Now in this tutorial we'll be learning about if statements. Now, you may recall in the previous episode we learned about input. Here I'll just go ahead and declare uh, answer as string. And I'll go ahead and ha have the computer ask the user, and move my mouse out the way, what is your name? If I can type, that is. And so we'll have answer. Answer will be the variable which the input will save into. And if you're not familiar with this, go back to the previous tutorial. And we can go ahead and print answer. That way when we run our program, what is your name? Zachary. And it prints out Zachary. However, we can do some different things with this input, and we can use the if statement. Now, what the if statement does is it checks a condition, and if the condition is true, then it will give an effect. It's kind of like cause and effect. Here, I'll show you. If, and we'll have our variable answer. So, if answer equals Zach, and then you always have to use then to end off an if statement. And then the computer is going to say, okay, if answer, it's going to check if answer equals Zach. If the user types in Zach, then it's going to print to the screen, you are awesome. And always end your if statements with end if. So it knows when to stop. And so what the computer is going to do, it's going to ask us for our name. It's going to save the name into answer. And if answer equals Zach, then it's going to print you are awesome. So we can run our program. So we can say, what is your name? Well, my name's Zach. You are awesome. And we can try that for other names, uh, Bob, and it doesn't do anything. Now, we can also put in other conditions for this if statement using something called else if, else if. And what else if does is just gives a different condition. So else if answer, our variable, equals, hmm, what name should we give a reaction to? How about a mean, a mean English teacher in my school, Miss Murray. So if answer equals Miss Murray, don't forget to put then, it's going to print you are evil because Miss Murray is evil. And so we can run our program. Uh, let's put Miss Murray, you are evil, which is true. So, just a recap it inputs what is your name, it saves whatever the user typed into answer. If answer, what the user typed, equals Zach, and remember to put these quotation marks because you're dealing with the string. So if answer equals Zach, then it's going to print you are awesome. Else, if we have a different condition, if answer equals Miss Murray, don't forget those quotation marks because it's a string, Miss Murray, then it will print you are evil. It's cause and effect. Cause, answer equals Zach, effect, it will print you are awesome. And so, I'm going to run this one more time to show you. Uh, let's put Zach. You are awesome. Now, we can also have one more statement I'm going to teach you. will be called else. And you don't have to put then or anything. Else is saying, if there's any other condition, anything else, then it will print. I don't know you. So, if the answer does not equal Zach, and if the answer does not equal Ms. Murray, then it's going to have a default print, I don't know you. So we can test this. And we'll type in Billy Bob, I don't know you. And we can try again, loading our program. What is your name? Uh, Miss Murray, you are evil. Which, again, is true. Miss Murray is evil. And this can be useful else print 
just to give a default because if we did not have else print, so we did not have that, if we typed in anything other than Zach and Miss Murray, here, Bob, it doesn't do anything. And so this is good if you want to have the computer do something no matter what. So else print, I don't know you, go away. And so, again, recap. If our variable answer equals Zach, it, this is the cause. Answer equals Zach. The effect, it prints you are awesome. So different causes have different effects. The same concept applies with numbers. Here, I'll go ahead and clear all this. All right, we'll dim x as integer, so we'll have a variable. And we're going to set x to equal, mm, let's do 6. And if x is greater than 6, then, actually no, if x is greater than 4, which it is, x equals 6, and so 6 is greater than 4, then print, uh, we'll just put 6 is greater than 4 and if. And so we can run our program. And it works. It says 6 is greater than 4. We can change this up by saying if 6 is less than 4, which is obviously not true. And we'll change this text up a little bit. Ah. Alright, so if 6 is less than 4, which is not, it will print 6 is less than 4. And C doesn't do anything because the conditions are impossible. So this is untrue. And since it's untrue, it will not print. And so remember, these three terms, if, then, and end if. Remember end if. It's very important. If you do not have end if, you get a big fat error message. If without end if on current line. So you just got to put end if. And so if you want, you can go ahead and make whatever you want. You can make name recognition, age recognition, you know, have people enter in their age or how much money they have, etc., and then give effects. You know, play some tricks on your friends with the name thing by insulting your friends as they put in your name. Have some fun with it. If statements are very important in programming, it's my like my absolute favorite command in programming. You'll find it everywhere. And so I recommend you practice with this. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment or private message me. And my name's Zachary. I hope this was beneficial to you in any capacity. And so thank you guys so much for watching, and I bid you farewell.